Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Jay Wits, and welcome to another episode of TCG Tuesday. Today I'm playing a deck that, uh, coincidentally, was the first TCG Tuesday before they were called TCG Tuesday, back when I just played on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online, and that is Garchomp Altaria. Now, a lot of people don't consider this to be a good deck. Um, in fact, even when I first played it, it was sort of a borderline thing where some people thought it was going to wreck the format, others thought it wasn't going to be good. It ended up really underachieving and not really doing that well. However, the deck has some odd potential. Um, Ross Cawthon was able to top 64 with it at Nationals, um, and it has some random potential. It's really good, I feel like, uh, with the addition of Silver Bangle. There's some nice math to knock out 170 HP EXs. It also has a weakness advantage over Black Kyurem EX. Um, so there's just a couple of small things to add up. It's also very consistent, easy to play deck, and doesn't have any EX Pokemon, except for the Jirachi I have in there. I don't know what it is, but a lot of you guys seem to like it when I play decks that don't have EXs in them to prove that they can win. Um, I'll admit it, most of the time good decks do have EXs in them, but every once in a while there are some strategies that work without them. So to start, I open Mr. Mime, who is completely useless in this matchup. He blocks bench damage, which is good against things like Darkrai and uh, the Plasma Kyurem. <laughs> I almost said Keldeo again. Uh, that was my most embarrassing mistake when doing the official commentary for the World Championships. Water Legendaries, they both start with K. Speaking of Kyurem, here's the Black Kyurem now. And interestingly enough, my opponent searched him out with Heavy Maul and benched him and attached to him. Now, in this matchup, I feel like my biggest threat is a Keldeo that gets a lot of water energy on it and can start one-shotting me over and over again. I am not afraid whatsoever, though, of Black Kyurem because I can knock it out really easily in one hit due to his times 2 weakness to Dragon. Yes, I've got the times 2 weakness myself, but really, what does it matter when he's already hitting me for 200 damage? Like, congratulations, you hit me for 400. Um, so for now, I am trying to set up the Swablu's to evolve the new Altarias. What I really need is a Gambite, which I believe I'm going to grab with this Ultra Ball here. Um, one of the funnest parts of this deck is the Gabite, who has the ability Dragon Call. Let's you simply search your deck for any uh, dragon type Pokemon and put it in your hand. So you can often just chain a bunch of Gabites together, and it makes it really easy to get this deck set up in one turn. So I'm um, gonna evolve right away. I'm gonna evolve the one that I did not attach to. In case off this end I hit a rare candy, um, then I can just Dragon Call for Garchomp and rare candy. Unfortunately, looking at my hand, uh, this is not so great. I got two Garchomps, no rare candy, also no supporter, but at the very least I will definitely have a Garchomp next turn, no matter what. Uh, he can't knock out two of my Gambite in the same turn, so instead, since I can't really evolve this turn, I already do have the Garchomps, I'm just grabbing some Altaria. And Altaria's Fight Song gives each of your Dragon Pokemon 20 more damage due to their attacks. So the idea of this combo is just set up very quickly by using Dragon Call, attack and deal a lot of damage combined with Fight Song for a small amount of energy, and you're using non-EX attackers so your opponent has to run through six of you instead of something like four or three, um, things like that. So here's an end. Um, I'm okay with that. I could always get those Garchomps back. Now, of course, I have the rare candy, but either way, totally okay with this. And my opponent just passes, and so without getting a Blastoise out that quickly, I am free roam to go crazy here. I've got the Dragon Calls and I don't even need them. I can just get Altaria here, uh, since my other one was shuffled back in. But that's another great thing is, by being able to constantly search with Dragon Call, you are a little bit resistant to things like N or Bad Hands. So turn three is what I would consider your average setup time. Um, turn two is even better, and that's where this deck can really even succeed and beat some decks that are a lot better than it. Turn three I'm okay with, and because my opponent decided to bench that Black Pyramid EX, I am going to have a field day here. So I've got my Blend Energy, which just allows you to provide either of Garchomp's energy costs if you want to do his second attack for more damage. But right now, I am not going to need that. Treat Mr. Mime, uh, play another level ball, trying to look for a Gambi, and... Oh, I, uh, I guess I didn't check my deck very well. 
Turns out the two Gambite I have in play right now are the only Gambite, so I've got one prized. Um, that's not good. I'm trying to debate. I mean, I should just grab the Swablu. I'm trying to decide, uh, should I bench it? Should I not? It's never a huge pain to bench it. The only problem is, let's say I do bench it, they knock out a Garchomp, then I need to get the Gambite down right away. Either way, I feel like I'm in a really good spot, so that's fine. Use Skyla to search my deck for any item or trainer card. Catch her up and mock cut for the ridiculous 260 damage because of a combi combination of weakness, my initial 60 damage, 30 more damage from my attached, uh, completely forgot, was called, Silver Bangle, Fight Songs, uh, so all those things together, you can just deal a ridiculous amount of damage. And that's why I'm okay with this matchup some of the time. Now, like I said, if they're able to get a Blastoise and a heavy Keldeo out, it can be a bit more trouble. That said, I can still knock out Keldeo with my second attack, combined with Bangle and two Altaria, so... The math is not terrible in this matchup. It really does work out in your favor most of the time. And so, my opponent, who still doesn't have a Blastoise, they've got their Tropical Beach. Um, the Superior Energy Retrieval has me a little bit nervous, but... I feel like if they had a Blastoise, they would have dropped it already, so... They can discard two cards in their hand, get four energy from the discard back into it. Which is great when you're doing things like recycling Black Kiram. Not so great when you are getting destroyed by an army of Garchomps. And so right now, and he even left the Keldeo active, so I can already just Dragon Blade it for a knockout. Like I said, I've got the Bangle and the two Altaria. I've even got a third Altaria here if he decides to knock one of mine out, so yeah. He just uh, scoops the game there. It was pretty much out of reach. Maybe he could have gotten a Blastoise, a Keldeo gone crazy, but my setup was looking really, really good. And so, I don't like ending games in about five minutes, so gonna try and play another one. I'll skip ahead as soon as it matches me up with somebody. Alright, so we are back to test another matchup here with my Garchomp Altaria deck. I uh, say have fun, good luck. I return, and let's do this. Once again, not an ideal starter. I like Swablu over Mr. Mime, but still not crazy about either. One of the biggest problems about Swablu is his 40 HP. Really easy to knock out in the, oh, in the Team Plasma decks. It just showed it to me. So um, all they need is a Water Energy, a Colorous Machine, and one Deoxys EX in the bench, and they can deal 40 on turn one. So right away I'm trying to debate, do I want a Juniper, discard all these resources? I certainly don't want a Colrus for zero. Um, I, neither player has any bench Pokemon. I think I'm just going to Skyla for level ball, get a Gambite down. That way I can at least survive the turn if he gets everything he needs. Maybe I'll draw something to use that rare candy. If he doesn't knock me out, I can evolve to Altaria and really try and get things going with that Juniper. But yeah, just quickly surveying my deck this time. I do see that I do have four Gabite, don't have two prize, so that's good. Level ball away! And that's another thing I really love about this deck is everything in your deck, except for the Garchomp himself, is searchable by level ball. So you can level ball for a Gambite really easily, you can level ball for an Altaria, um, even Mr. Mime if you really need him, and he actually is very useful in this matchup because of Kiram's Frost Spear. And I actually, um, okay, so a lot just happened in a quick amount of time. I used Sing, which put him to sleep. He flipped Tails asleep in between turns. Then he put me to sleep using his Mana's ability on the bench. Then he woke up between turns. I fell asleep between turns. Thankfully, uh, when you evolve your move special conditions, so evolved Altaria, all that sleeping nonsense is over, but at the end of the day, I did keep him asleep, um, which could have saved me if he did have the Colorus Machine and a Deoxys or something like that. Also, in general, the Muna is Muna, Mana. Um, I'm trying to learn the official Pokemon pronunciations these days, and it is just so hard because it's always constantly contradicting itself. Anyway, um, so here I'm in a weird spot. I can uh, Rare Candy to Garchomp, but I don't have an energy to attack, so I'm just gonna go Gambite so I can do a little bit of extra searching. But yeah, um, the mana is not a very common play. I'm really curious as to what his plans are. The mana itself has long distance hypnosis, which can potentially put yourself asleep or your opponent to sleep. It also evolves into Musharna, who allows you to basically draw a card each turn. 
and he plays Aether, which is a really interesting card. Uh, it got a lot of hype when it was first released and never really saw any competitive play. The idea behind Aether is you flip over the top card of your deck. If it's an energy, attach it. So I think I'm sort of getting the idea of my opponent's deck. The concept is just try and attach a bunch of energy to Plasma Kiram as quickly as possible. You have Colrus Machine, which lets you search your deck for Plasma Energy. Um, you also have the Ethers, and I'm guessing he does run the Musharna, which allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck. That way you can make sure there's an energy on top for the Ethers. So that was not a great turn for me. He captured up my Gabite, knocked it out. Thankfully, I do have a rare Candy Garchomp. Now, I won't be knocking him out. I actually can't really use the effect of Silver Bangle if he doesn't have EX Pokemon, so it's going to be an old-fashioned slug out between all non-EX Pokemon. The way things used to be. So, I attach. Um, I'm okay with this. I've got the level ball. I even did end up hitting the Mr. Mime, which I'm cool with. But yeah, definitely want another Gabite down. And I am debating using that Super Rod. It could get my Gabite and the Gibble that was just knocked up back into play. But I do want to save that Super Rod in case, for some reason, I need to, you know, bring back a Garchomp or get energy in the late game. So I'm going to hold off there. With Skyla, I think I just want a supporter. I don't have anything really set up for me next turn. I like these resources. I could get Juniper, but instead of discarding them, I think I'm just going to get N, which I'm okay with. If he gets another knockout, I can even N into 4, which is cool with me. But here I can mock up with 60, plus 20 for Maltarius Fight Song, 480. So, seems like we're sort of locked in this battle of two-hit knockouts. Unless he runs Deoxys. I haven't seen any yet, but if he gets two Deoxys EX on the bench, he can start hitting me for 140 with Blizzard Burn, and then things are a little different. Speaking of unorthodox cards, he's playing Caitlyn. New card that allows you to put cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck and then draw new cards. Some people attest that it can be decent in certain situations. It's definitely good in things like fossil decks, but yeah. Oh, that's not good. He hits heads on the long distance hypnosis, meaning he, he puts me to sleep. And he can't attack this turn unless he finds some way to switch out, which he doesn't. But I get that one quarter chance where he hits heads, I fall asleep. I flip tails in between turns and stay asleep, and my deck does not run any kind of switch cards. I don't run switch. I don't even run float stone. I'm normally needing to attach an energy to retreat, so I'm just stuck. That's a huge bummer. Uh, I was ready to knock out him in two turns, and now I'm sort of on the ropes. Um, I have the option to set down another Swan Blue. It's sort of that same thing problem I had last game. This time I think I'm going to hold off because I would like to get another Gibble and I do know I have more Gibble in the deck. But yeah, without being able to attack, um, my catcher's not really useful because he's got the Float Stone now down on the mana. Um, I guess I'm just going to use Tropical Beach, draw until I have 7 and end my turn. I wake up from the sleep which is great but he could always risk another long- oh, no he can't, he evolved. So the big gimmick about the Masharna is Forewarn allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck, take one, put the other one back on top. So the idea is Forewarn gives you a little bit of consistency. Um, it's nowhere near as strong as old evolution draw-based cards. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with older sets, check out the Great Encounters Claydol card, which is just ridiculous. Such an amazing consistency card. So much better than just drawing one after looking at two, but for now, that's all we've got, and it does have some synergy with my opponents uh, constantly using his ethers to attach extra energy. He also plays a Getsis to remove the items from my hand and draw a few for himself. So my opponent's got all kinds of unorthodox cards that seem to work together in a strategy. The only thing that I'd like to see that I don't see so far is Deoxys EX. I don't know if my opponent doesn't play them or just hopes that they won't need them, but Against me, um, 120 damage is great, but not enough to knock me out in one hit. So I do get that Gibble that I wanted to bench, which is great. Um, decide to attach my blend to the bench. I could set up two energy on one Pokemon, but when it's the blends, I only run four of them in the deck. Uh, I like to sort of spread the love when I can. Here I've got the level ball, and yep, there's my Gambite. The only problem is there's not a second Gabite, so not really sure what I'm going to get. Normally I like to chain you. Know, Gabite, Gabite. Could get a Garchomp here. 
Um, yep, it looks like that's all I can get. And... Oh, pff, I didn't click on the car jump. I thought I did for some reason. It's all good. I can always search it again next turn, but... Eh, a little unfortunate. Either way, I've got the mock cut for the knockout, and while he can knock me out, I'm okay with that. I already have 120 damage on me, and with the Mr. Mime, my opponent can't catch or something up and then knock me out on the bench. Um, he has to deal with Mr. Mime if he wants to deal any kind of bench damage. And it looks like he's gonna do just that with catching. And on top of that, I'm totally fine with Mr. Mime going down. He's not really a key part of my total strategy. He's just a way to slow down decks that do deal bench damage. That way I can keep setting up all of these bench pieces together. So he's got another Kiram coming up, but I can already see, I feel like I'm in a advantageous position because all I need to do is keep knocking him out with low energy while he still needs three energy to deal any kind of real damage that can hurt me. Well, he does have two Musharnas in play. Now he can search, draw two cards at a time, maybe hit more energy for Aether, but I feel like I can deal with him faster than he can deal with me. Just gonna be whether or not I get things like awkward sleep flips and things like that. The other thing I really need now is an energy. I realize I decided not to put two energy on one Pokemon. Now I don't have one. Um, so here, I guess I'm just gonna put up the Garchomp. Hope I draw an energy. If I don't, I can at least try and start setting up a two-hit knockout, and I'm at least gonna get another Garchomp in play. Thankfully, I do draw the energy, which is great. If I didn't, I always had the uh, contingency strategy of playing my level ball for Jirachi EX to get a supporter card and use it. I feel like if you run a deck that has level ball, Jirachi EX is just so good. Now, uh, do I have any reason to use it now? Not precisely, but... It's a nice backup strategy to have. Really liked it in Blastoise when I played it in the Klesinski open. So here, Dragon Blade now lines up for just enough damage. It does 100 plus 40 from my two fight song, Altarias. The only bad thing about Dragon Blade is you have to discard the top two cards of your deck. I just lost two supporters, a Juniper and an N. I'm okay with that. The only problem is in the late game, I'm only taking one prize at a time. If I keep using Dragon Blade, I might deck myself out. Um, it's more of a, a last-ditch effort. Normally Dragon Blade is much better because you use it and you're hopefully knocking out an EX Pokemon. Combined with Silver Bangle for 30 plus an extra 40 from those two Altaria. You can knock out 170, uh, <laughs> 170 HP EX Pokemon. Because I'm not doing that though, we've got this weird exchange where I'm sort of just hoping to one-shot his Pokemon. That said, if I run through this Kyurem right here, he's going to be all out of attackers. And even here, he didn't get enough energy to deal Blizzard Burn. He's okay dealing 30 and 30 to the bench now, but if I knock him out, he needs to get 3 energy in one turn to really start dealing any kind of damage. Otherwise, he's just going to be stuck with Masharnas and it's all going to be over. So I draw. Thankfully, it's another energy. Um, and I already had the Juniper, which I was okay with. Rare Candy to Garchomp. Everything's looking pretty good. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to play the Juniper. After all, I do have to discard two cards to do this Dragon Blade, but I'm okay. Uh, the Super Rod at least puts three cards back into my deck. It should make my total 12. Um, I have the Bangle. Honestly, shouldn't have attached it. Um, just to have extra cards in my deck if my opponent played N. Doesn't look like my opponent runs Deoxys, which could be one of the flaws in his deck. He could have been getting one shots, I mean, instead of two. So with that, I take one prize. I'm always expecting the second. I'm so used to taking those EX knockouts. So after all that, um, I'm technically only halfway there, which is some of the reasons why I liked the game back when EX Pokemon weren't so rampant. Um, games are really slow and drawn out. Um, that said, that's not always a good thing either. A lot of games went to time, and they took a lot more out of you mentally, honestly. Thankfully, I'm running a deck where you don't really have to think that much. You just have to set up and go crazy. So he plays the Super Rod of his own to get another Kyurem back in. I've knocked out three Kyurem so far. Thought maybe I was done with the Force, but certainly put a lot of energy into the discard pile, and I'm okay with that. Eventually, he's going to run out of ways to accelerate through Culverus Machine and Aether. 
In fact, I haven't seen one in a while. He might be out completely. And with that, I feel like the game's pretty much sealed. He wasn't able to get another attacker out. I have now three Altarias. Um, doesn't really change too much, but it's nice. I can at least knock out the active with just a straight mock cut. Actually, I already could have. I only need to do 100, but with that, I can pretty much clean up house. Even if he does find a way to knock out one Garchomp, I've still got the second. If he knocks out one Altaria, I still have two more. There's really no way he can get out of this except maybe ending me and leaving a Pokemon stuck up with Catcher and I can't hit an energy to retreat. But aside from that, it looks like I've got it here. He does not have a Float Stone on the active with Sharna, so he can't retreat it. And it's a Fanny! That's three retreat costs, so it's not going anywhere. He does have the Colorist Machine, so he's got two energy on him, but I've got the Catcher and plenty of cards left in my deck. Eight is fine, uh, I can discard two of those. And I can even end late in the game if I have trouble decking out. Pretty much at this point, uh, there's very little that can stop me. In fact, I just decide not to attach this Fighting Energy just in case. Um, I'm gonna end right now. My opponent will only get three cards, and that should probably shut him out. Now, I could have Catchered there and then been the Dragon Blade. Probably should have done that instead. Um, but either way, I'm just in such a good spot. I'm not really sure what my opponent could do here. There's the Catcher, but I've already got the energy that I need to retreat. He whiffs on the Aether, so has to play Juniper. Probably running out of cards of his own, but... There's really not much he could do. Even if he does knock out this Altaria, all I need to do is promote and Dragon Blade and it's all over. Second Aether, and it's gone. And those are all four Aethers that he has, so the game is over. But yeah, in general, just wanted to show you guys sort of how Garchomp Altaria has a chance in this format. It's not great, but in a weird way, I feel like it's better now than it was back when everyone was hyping it one year ago when I first did my first Pokemon Trading Card Game Online video. But that being said, it certainly is a lot of fun. I'm definitely running out of popular decks to play. Um, I'm going to have to look, dig into the well. I know there's some Verizian Genesect variants I can play, but starting to run out of decks that are the best in the format. Thankfully, tournaments start up soon, and I'll be able to observe more and see some of the decks that are actually doing well in actual tournaments. Until then, thank you for watching today's episode of TCG Tuesday, and I'll see you next week with another deck.